Good morning and welcome to our service of morning prayer this morning and an especial welcome to you if it is your first time joining us. A copy of the order of service is available on our website if you don't have one to hand. Let us take a moment now to still ourselves as we come before the Lord this morning. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And we take a moment now to reflect upon those times in the last week when we have done wrong that we can bring those things to the Lord with an open heart. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, as the forgiven children of the Lord our God, we speak in praise of him together. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name. And now we continue to praise God through the words of the Venite. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountain are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come. Let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our reading from the Psalms today is Psalm 52. If you have a copy to hand, be it in your Bible or if you can find a copy online as you watch, then join us as we lift our voices together. Why do you boast, O mighty one, of mischief done against the godly? All day long you are plotting destruction. Your tongue is like a sharp razor, you worker of treachery. You love evil more than good and lying more than speaking the truth. You love all words that devour, O oh deceitful tongue. But God will break you down forever. He will snatch and tear you from your tent. He will uproot you from the land of the living. The righteous will see and fear and will laugh at the evildoer. See the one who would not take refuge in God but trusted in abundant riches and sought refuge in wealth. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the steadfast love of God for ever and ever. I will thank you for ever because of what you have done. In the presence of the faithful, I will proclaim your name for it is good. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Now our first Bible reading. The Old Testament reading is taken from Jeremiah chapter 28 verses 5 to 9. 
Then the prophet Jeremiah replied to the prophet Hananiah before the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. He said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfil the words you have prophesied by bringing the articles of the Lord's house and all the exiles back to this place from Babylon. Nevertheless, listen to what I have to say in your hearing and in the hearing of all people. From early times, the prophets who preceded you and me have prophesied war, disaster and plague against many countries and great kingdoms. But the prophet who prophesies peace will be recognised as one truly sent by the Lord only if his prediction comes true. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now Mike will deliver our gospel reading and our sermon for the day. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Anyone who welcomes you, welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes someone known to be a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes someone known to be righteous, will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of water to one of these little ones, who is known to be my disciple, Truly, I tell you, that person will certainly be rewarded. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now may I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I'm sure you've noticed it's fairly incredible what people are getting up to during lockdown and certainly the activities on our Zoom account, on our YouTube account and the amount of phone calls and care that's going on around our parish and our area has been truly astounding. People are discovering new wells of creativity, new ways of connecting. And we also, of course, realise that there is a massive downside, not just socially and economically, but also in the life of the fellowship. It's not the best that can be. And we continue in our prayers. One of the amazing things we've been watching um, from time to time uh, on Facebook is the efforts of a member of the family decorating their living room. Uh, there's been a progress report which has been most encouraging. And uh, my word, it's been a thorough job. It's been a thorough job. We've watched as preparation has been carefully made. Most things taken out of the room, the floor secured, sheeting put over large bits of furniture that can't be moved. Everything prepared beautifully. All the right equipment used, slowly and painstakingly, over a period of weeks, the new room in all its pristine splendour has come to pass. We haven't seen it in person yet, but we hope to. But it's a pretty beautiful and, dare I say, professional thing to look at. As we say in Bristol, proper job. It's amazing how many things we say relative to uh, decorating, isn't it? We say, ooh, that was a bit slapdash. You know, just splashed it on, didn't really look at what you were doing, just get in, do it and get out. We say, we'll give something a, a lick of paint, meaning just that, a lick of paint, when what really needed was a good deal of preparation and a couple of careful coats. And with regard to houses, we say, oh well, they're just papering over the cracks meaning, what caused the cracks? Um, why are they there in this wall? Why might not it be a good idea just to put paper over it? 
papering over the cracks. And we extend that, don't we, to lots of other situations as well. It really means there's something beneath that's not really being addressed. And all we're doing is papering over the cracks. But in our heart of hearts, well, we know something's going to come to the surface. And so to the reading we've just heard from the prophet Jeremiah. Now his name alone is a byword. Um, we don't really do this, do we, with any other prophets? There's a hymn I know called Dare to be a Daniel, not very fashionable today, it's about 100 years old. But Isaiah, Ezekiel, you never say, wow, you were a bit of an Isaiah this morning, do we? Do we? And we certainly never say, wow, what a proper little Habakkuk you are. And yet we do say, mm, a real Jeremiah. There's even a noun, a Jeremiad, an outpouring of Jeremiah-like things and doom. It's much more complicated than that, actually. There used to be a sign on the road out to Bath from Bristol uh, in front of a church, and it contained the intriguing statement, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. And underneath the word lamentations. Well, the good news is the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. And that's nothing to lament about. But it is complicated. Look at the text for today. From the book of Jeremiah. And Jeremiah, among prophets, is the real deal. No matter what the cost, he tells it like it is. It may be a bit of a Jeremiah, and he may be being a bit of a Jeremiah, but he tells it like it is. This is how God sees it. This is how God has told me to say that it is. And this story is a story of a confrontation between Jeremiah and a false prophet, uh, also in the court and amongst the priests and the people in this encounter called Hananiah. It may help us when we look back at the passage to understand that um, Jeremiah wore, as far as we're aware, a yoke that's a bit like an ox's yoke, a wooden yoke round his neck, to show that he was burdened in service for the Lord God. He was yoked and he was a servant bearing the burden of what he had to do. Now, one of the things about being the real deal is that you want to go deep, really deep. You want to go as deep as you can to find out what God needs to deal with and to apply God's love and healing to that situation. That's God's call for all his people to go really deep and apply his love and healing. It's a bit like a room. We say, oh, that corner's a bit mouldy, a bit of condensation there. Hmm. Or we could say, hmm, that crack needs decorating. That's all very well saying it, isn't it? The easiest part of the prophetic task is to say that things must change. We can say we need to redecorate this room. But the hardest part of the Christian walk is to work so that they do change and that they are brought about to go deep. So we come to this power confrontation between Hananiah and Jeremiah in front of the priests and the people. The nation is going through torrid and difficult times. Hananiah sort of just says, God's going to sort this out and it's all going to be a lot better. It's a bit of a papering over the cracks, actually. When Jeremiah says, Amen. But the proof of the prophecy is in the eating. The first stage of decoration is easy. 
saying, look, that's what we need to do, that's where the problem is. It's the second stage that takes work, the work we're all called to do. Listen to this excerpt, which is very well known from earlier in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 8, verse 11, talking of false prophets like Ananiah. Jeremiah says, they dress the wound of my people as though it were not serious. Peace, peace, they say, when there is no peace. They're putting on a sticking plaster. But actually, God wants to go deep, to do the deep things in our heart and in the life of his people and in the life of their community that need to be done to produce the healing where the dressing can actually be put on. Jeremiah confronts Hananiah and say, you can only tell a real prophet when you look at the end result. Is there real peace? Isn't it real peace at the end of this, Hananiah? While the rest is history, Hananiah really goes off on one and breaks Jeremiah's yoke. But it doesn't go well for Hananiah. Perhaps sometimes we can say peace, peace, where there is no peace. Perhaps sometimes in our love we just want to rush and put a sticking plaster on things. But God says go deep. Don't just rush into the situation. Think how far we need to go, how deep we need to go to bring my love and healing and redemption to a situation. If there's a wound, if there's a crack, allow the great physician to work in it. Let God go deep, heal the deep, and peace will come. To go back to the very famous quotation from Dame Julian of Norwich, it is then, and not when you just say it needs doing, that all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. As we consider those words, let us affirm our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now we join together for our prayers of intercession. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to respond. Hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning to pray for our world. We thank you that you reign over every corner of this earth and that you hold the whole world in your hands. In Psalm 24, we're told that the earth is yours and everything in it. And so we ask you, sovereign God, to establish your rule and reign on earth as it is in heaven. We bring before you the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and ask that you would bring an end to this virus. We pray especially for those countries whose healthcare systems and infrastructures are ill-equipped to provide the care and support people need at this time. Please draw close to their leaders and all seeking to provide care and strengthen, enable and equip them to cope. Thank you for our NHS services and we continue to pray for medical staff working tirelessly to cure the sick and we ask that you'd strengthen them in their roles. We pray for all those living and working in care homes and for those who provide health and social care in the community. In light of the tragic event in Reading last weekend, we pray for those who lost their lives and for their family and friends as they grieve their loved ones. Please comfort and strengthen them as they mourn and we pray for your justice to be established. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we lift before you our local community and we ask that you draw especially close to those for whom lockdown is a real challenge. We pray for those who are lonely and isolated and ask that you draw close to them, show them that they are not forgotten and give us wisdom and compassion that we might reach out to those most in need. You call us to shine your light in the darkness and we ask that in the coming week you'd show us what we can do to be beacons of light in this local community. This week we pray for the residents of Harcourt Road and ask you to reveal your love to them and enable the church to continue to be a witness of the unshakable hope that is found in you. We pray for Emmanuel at Westbury and for Reverend Mike Kane. Thank you for all the ways they are seeking to spread the good news of Jesus Christ in this community. And we pray you'd continue to bless and anoint them in the work you've called them to. We also lift before you little French restaurant and pray for your blessing on the partnership between them and the church as they open in the church grounds in the coming days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we lift before you all suffering in body, mind and spirit at this time. We pray especially for Beryl Hall, 
Viv Robinson, Eric Bevan, Mavis John, Sally Noble, Albert Page, Rosemary Penketh, Diane Randall, and Rebecca Robertson. In the silence, let us take a moment to bring before the Lord any known to us who are suffering at this time. God of all comfort, we pray that you would fill them with your peace and that they would be aware of your near and dear presence. We ask that you draw close to all the medical teams caring for them and we pray for their healing and wholeness in Jesus' name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray too for those we love and see no longer and especially for John Chambers who died recently, and for his wife, Jerry, and all his family and friends as they mourn him. We pray too for Douglas Medhurst who died this week, and for his daughter, Alison, and his family, and all his friends, that you may comfort them in their grief. Lord, we lift before you those whose anniversaries of death occur in the forthcoming week. Arnold Salisbury, Jesse Taylor, Roy Radford, Mary Medhurst, and Dorothy Price. And we take a moment to remember anyone personally known to us. Lord, may you grant them mercy and forgiveness and eternal rest in your presence. May your light shine upon them and may they know the fullness of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for our church here in Westbury Park, and we praise you for the ways we have been able to continue to connect with each other even in these strange times. Thank you for the pastoral team and for all they're doing to keep people connected and we ask you to bless their ministry. We pray that even though we are socially distanced, that you would unite us by your spirit and enable us to be a community which reflects you in all we do. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would draw close to Emma and all on the leadership team as they navigate this challenging time. Give them wisdom as they respond to changing guidelines and vision as they seek to lead this community. We pray above all that you would continue to strengthen them with power through your spirit in their inner being and that they would remain rooted and established in your unfailing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour. Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray the collect for the day. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the spirit of your son into our hearts whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. If you are able, after the service, we'd love for you to join us for coffee. Unfortunately, we can't supply the coffee or the cake, but if you'd like to bring a cup and maybe even a slice along, we would love to see you. The Zoom details are in the weekly news and will also be shown after the end of the service on the screen. We look forward to seeing you there. Let us finish now with the words of the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>